Hi, I'm Barry Keyfavor with Legacy Station. Legacy Station is a distributor for Electric Row Company aftermarket boards. These boards are used for replacing boards that have been burned out to maybe 10, 15 years old in original Lionel and MTH engines. Uh, they can also be used to put in post-war engines. Um, there's very few engines they can't uh, go into. Electric Railroad Company makes command boards and sound boards just for about anything that you might need. Uh, the three basic uh, command boards they make is an AC board for the old Lionel AC Pullmore type motors. Uh, they make a DC board for the newer uh, DC motors and they also make a board that has Odyssey in it. Uh, they, they call it cruise control instead of Odyssey but it is Odyssey. And Today we're going to install a board into a Weaver Tennessean. It's a steam engine. The engine itself is about 20 years old. And I want to show you how easy it is. And what we're going to use today, this particular customer wants not only the command board in it, but he also wants a sound board in it, uh, which Electric Railroad Company pretty much makes for about anything you want. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to install what's called a DC commander because this particular engine has a DC can motor in it. And then after we finish doing that, we're going to install the soundboard. The command board comes along with all the stuff that they send with it in a pink heavy-duty poly bag. The first thing you want to do is unpack it and make sure that everything's complete. This itself is the command board, and in a minute we're going to go over a little bit about what all you'll see on this board. Notice that there is a 24-pin uh, uh, male connector block that the R4L board goes into, which is your radio board. This is the R4 radio board that you'll plug into the command board, but that's one of the last things you're going to do. So once you see it, it's there, just put it aside for now. Then when you look at all the accessories that come with it, you're going to see, first of all, you're going to get a run program switch, just like you do on your Lionel trains. So you can program certain features into it. You can change the addresses. You can do pretty much everything you can do with a Lionel board. You're going to get the antenna that plugs into the command board. You're going to get four capacitors. Now these are to bridge across the uh, uh, the brushes on the motor and you only need one for each brush so in this particular case the engine we're going to do today there's only one engine in it so you're only going to need two of these so you'll have two extra when you're done. The reason they put uh, four in is because if you have uh, like a post-war uh, F3 or F7, those usually have two pull mores in it. A lot of the larger steam engines that Lionel will make will have two engines already in them, so you're going to need two of those for each one. So that's why you get four, uh, although in some cases you're going to need half of them. You're going to get some additional wire that you can use if your wire going to the two motor brushes aren't long enough. And then you're going to get a couple wire ties that you'll need, and you're going to get some shrink tubing and you're going to get a couple of little screws that sometimes can be used to hold the board onto the frame. One of the things that I've always liked about the Electric Railroad Company boards is that it's so easy to install them. Matter of fact, there's no soldering. It's strictly done with very basic tools. The tools I use for the most part, you're going to need a set of wire strippers, wire cutters, some cases it might be helpful if you have some needle nose pliers, and either a flathead screwdriver or a Phillips head screwdriver. I also like to use a little pointed probe. In this case it's an old dental pick. Just for when you're putting plugs in sometimes it's nice to make sure that you've got all the wires that go into the plug seated down onto whatever you're plugging them into. This can prevent uh, a lot of problems on down the road when you try to crank this thing up and got your fingers crossed and hope that it works properly. And in my case I've done a lot of these and I have never ever had one that did not work. The next thing you'll want to do is to download the instruction manual off of Electric Railroad Company's site. Uh, it's real easy to do. You go into the home page, you'll see a bunch of buttons on the left hand side. Go down to where it says manual, and then once you hit manual, you'll go down to whatever boards that you have and simply download them. It's a PDF file. This is the one I downloaded. It says DC Commander. There's one for each type of uh, board that they offer. And if you open it up, it's very easy to use. You're going to see, first of all, there's an overview to tell you a little bit about the board, enhanced features, uh, speed selection, and it will go all the way through uh, all the features of the boards. 
And that's going to give you an installation overview, which basically is going to tell you the tools you need, make sure everything is there, get your engine ready, and so forth. Once you get that done, then you get down to installation. Again, this is very easy to do. Everything they tell you to do is first of all in a paragraph, and then they'll have a picture uh, showing exactly what to do. In the case most all these boards, you're going to have five connectors. The first three uh, is going to be for your motor brushes, and the next two is going to be your input for your, uh, for your ground, and then uh, the hot coming off of your uh, center rail pickup. And on the other side of the board, you're going to see all of the uh, hookups. Uh, you've got hookups for rear coupler, front coupler, uh, then you've got two different grounds, and then you've got your antenna connection, which is up here. You can also use uh, position number one for antenna. It'll show you how to hook up the run program switch, and then you've got it for lights. You've also got it for smoke units, etc., uh, etc. Et Shows you what the board looks like when it's installed, and then you go all the way through. There's troubleshooting guide if need be. There's a programming guide if you want to program it different. So uh, it's a real functional, uh, uh, you know, document that you download for free, and uh, make sure you have that before you get started. The next thing you do is you get the engine out, and if it's a steam engine, it's a tender, and usually you're going to put your boards in the tender simply because that's where you've got the room to put boards and uh, everything associated with it. In this particular case, like I said earlier, it's a Weaver Tennessean, so the first thing you got to do is take the tender shell off, and if necessary, take off the, uh, the body shell to the engine. I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. Okay, now I've got the engine and the tender apart. Uh, now that I can see what's in there, I know what the next step is. And basically what you're going to have to do next is tear out everything that you don't need. But be careful, don't tear anything that you do need. Now this particular engine does have a headlight in it, and it's got a smoke unit in it, which is partially here and partially up in here. So we'll hook those back up because we want them functioning. Other than that, there's very little I'm going to have to do to the engine itself. All you see here is an old sound system that came with this engine, and I believe this engine is about 15 years old. So the sound system we're going to put in is going to be a definite improvement over what's already there. But this all has to come out, and probably one of the most scary things you'll do and that you'll be doing when you uh, install these boards is the first one or two when you have to rip all that stuff out. It's a little bit scary, and once you start cutting wires out, you're committed. But uh, believe me, I've never had a problem um, uh, the between the instructions and uh, and so forth, you'll, uh, you'll have no problem putting these things in. Now, uh, the other thing that I want to show here is that there is a plug. In this particular case, it's a four position plug, which means you've got wires that's coming from your center rail pickup down here. There's two of them. One of them is a ground, and then the other two are your motor brushes. Now, in this particular case, Weaver didn't color code them. They're all black, so I'm going to have to trace them through. But what I can do is once I cut this tether back here, then I can go ahead and use that instead of running another tether. Also notice that there is a speaker already in here. Uh, on down the road, once we get the command board in, we'll be putting in the sound board. Uh, it might be tempted to leave that speaker in because uh, it would make your installation shorter. But my experience is that uh, the speakers that are this old and there's a brand new speaker and a plastic plastic baffle that's going to come with the sound boards, uh, you're better off just installing the new one because it'll help improve your sound. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take everything out of here. I'm going to turn the video off as I do it, then I'll turn it back on as soon as I complete that section. Okay, now we've got the engine and the tender apart. We've got the uh, electronics taken out of the tender uh, and put aside and everything is left we can use. So the next thing is to assess what you have left and then we can start putting this together. What I've got left on this tender is you can see that the electronics are gone. It does have an electric coupler, so here are the two wires for the electric coupler and the board will accommodate that so we will be able to activate this coupler uh, you know, through our cab one or cab two. This is the ground wire, so uh, we'll have a wire that's easily accessible to uh, hook up the ground uh, into the command board. And then we have our four wires coming out of our tether. Now at this particular point, there's no way of telling where these wires go, but it's going to be a simple 
uh, task, uh, you know, a little later on of simply plugging this in, using the meter, putting on continuity, and then we can follow through, uh, you know, what we have. And once you find the first two wires, which are going to be your uh, your uh, red hot wire and then your ground wire, then the rest is pretty simple. We really don't need the ground wire because we're going to have it right here, although sometimes the duplicated up is not going to hurt a thing. Uh, and your uh, uh, wire coming from your uh, center rail uh, pickups, those are very simple to follow through, hook it up to this, and then once we do that, uh, all you've got left are the two brush wires. So at this particular time, it's time to mount the board. Notice that the board itself comes with a screw in the bottom, so simply take the screw out. Now I've already looked ahead. Keep in mind if you're going to put a sound board in this that we also uh, want to make sure that we put this in some place where it's going to leave room for the sound board. So I'm going to go ahead and use one of these holes that are already drilled. Now this is where the speaker was at, and I'm going to go ahead and mount the uh, command board. I'm going to turn it over, put the screw into a hole that's about center part, or about center, and then I'm going to turn it over, screw it in, make sure these wires are out of the way. Okay, I was trying to pinch a wire there, so. And then you want the board uh, fairly straight on the chassis itself. So there you are. I mean, just like that, you got your board in. Uh, and now we're ready to start hooking some wires up to it. Also, you're going to find that there's going to be some tender frames that simply don't have holes where you need them. So if that's the case, what uh, I usually do is just go ahead and drill a hole in the bottom of the tender. Uh, use a good sharp drill bit so the hole's not jagged and, and, and might tend to cut some wires and so forth. And put it someplace central where you can, uh, you know, easily mount your, your board where it's not going to be interfering with, you know, a set of trucks or couplers or anything like that. But in this particular case, we didn't have to do that. Now, one thing I like to do that kind of makes it easy, I like to take my manual and uh, I, I like to align the board itself the same way that I'm looking at it on the uh, installation manual. And the first thing we're going to hook up is the four wires, or what we call, uh, you know, motion or engine wires. And if you notice, you've got three uh, screws here. You're not going to use number two, but number one and number three are brush motors. Now they're going to tell you just put one in, it doesn't matter which way, uh, because every engine is different, there's no way of telling what's right or wrong. When you fire it up the first time, if it takes off going forward, then you've got it correct. If it takes off going backwards, all you're going to do is take the two brush wires and reverse them. And then the next two uh, wires that you have, uh, number four and number five on the block that just has two segments is number four is AC common which is your ground wire in this particular case I'm going to use uh, this one right here that we talked about and then uh, the last one which is position five is your AC hot that's normally color coded uh, red and will come from your center rail pickup so I'm going to go ahead and do that now Okay, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to trim the length of these wires. We ought to always make our insulation as neat as possible, and we need to make sure we leave enough wires on there to uh, go to where we want them to, but at the same time, we don't want to be a foot longer than they have to either, because at some point you're going to have to get those bundled up and out of the way. So it's easier just to make them the right length. Once you do that, then get your your uh, wire strippers and strip each one of these wires. I've got four of them in this one. Now you don't want these two off along because they're going to go into uh, these connectors right here and they're only about a quarter of an inch or less so if you have too much you really don't want bare wires sticking out. So what I do, I'll trim each one and twist it good because you've got a screw that's going to hold this in, so you want to twist it good so it doesn't spread out and come out the side of where you're going to install it. Some of them might get to be just a little bit long, so you can go ahead and trim them now. 
And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to do, and, and, and keep in mind if you're using a, if you're using a, a tether like this, you can number these wires any way you want to. So what I'm going to do to make it the same uh, sequencing as what's on this board here, wire 1 and 2 is going to be my brush wires, wire 3 is going to be my AC common, and number 4 is going to be my AC hot. Now, when you put these uh, wires into these little contact blocks, you can use a screwdriver that's got a, a small flathead tip like this one. I prefer, though, because you can kind of control it easier, a flathead jeweler screwdriver. Also, you're less likely to over tighten it. You do not want to over tighten it. So, I'm going to start out. I'm going to take brush number one. You've got to loosen a screw. Put the wire in and tighten it down snug. Don't try to be a he-man and see if you you know how tight you can get it. Just get it so it's good and snug. Okay, then wire number two is the next one. Keep in mind that we're going to skip one of these uh, screws up here. Well, I can't see the manual, but you're not going to use the second screw. You're going to use the third. The second screw is if you ever wanted to uh, uh, you know, run something AC on here, on there where you had a, uh, you know, where you had a, like a field coil on an AC engine. So number two is going to go there. Number three is going to go into my common or ground. Now, one thing that you can do is you can take an extra piece of wire let me get one here so get your extra piece of wire and what we're going to in essence do here is have two wires on the ground side one's going to come directly from the tender the other one then will come from the engine itself it never hurts to have a backup when it comes to your ground And once we do that, put that in. And then the last thing we do, wire number four. We'll go into the last contact block. Okay, now we have the first phase done. There's the plug. It'll go to the engine. I know it's kind of hard to see, but you've got one going to one brush, two going to the second brush, three along with this extra wire, which will be ground, going into the third, which is actually the four socket, and then the hot going into uh, the, um, uh, the last clip. And then what we're going to do on this extra ground wire we're going to splice these two wires together. We're not going to do it right now, but we're going to do it uh, before we get, you know, get finished with this. Now the next thing we're going to do, this is the male end to the plug that's going to eventually be plugged into the tender. We want to take it apart and pull these wires out like so. Take the shield off of it these wires are actually hooked into a board well it's going to be real simple to find out where the motor brushes go because they're right here there's your two motor brushes right here and here and they go into the two ends okay so this is where they go so it's simply a matter then of taking and matching up these pins here Okay, now we've got the uh, wire harness initially done, and what I've done here is I've taken and I've hooked up the wires coming from this part of the harness. I took that off and put those into proper sequence. Then I put the uh, plug back together. I took a uh, wire tie to make the installation a little neater here. 
I also uh, soldered this uh, wire here that you might see going to uh, the ground. So I've got a ground coming from the tender and I've got a ground coming from the engine. Now the next thing we're going to do and we're not too awful far away from uh, starting this up yet we're going to take the uh, we're going to take the program run switch which is provided for you. That's this little thing right here. You've got two wires coming out and then you've got a two position switch here and if you look on the bottom, you'll see there are three contacts. The center contact has a wire going to it and one of the end contacts do and then the other one is bare. And if you look at the instructions, they'll tell you how to align that so you can put it into the, uh, uh, the tender properly. Now, we were lucky there is a uh, coal already that's been pressed in here and it just so happens that the holes line up so it's going to be real simple to take this and put it in here so we're going to go in and do that next and then I'll show you how to hook it up. Okay now we've got a run uh, program switch installed that's it right here now what they tell you if you turn this over and look at it when the switch head itself uh, this piece right here is over the empty uh, contact here that's in the run position so typically what you want to do is you want to have this facing forward of the tender which in this case I did therefore if you want to run it it's forward if you want it to go into program then you just slide it backward do your programming and when you're finished just push it back just like any other uh, legacy or TMCC operated engine now the next thing we're going to do, now we're going to go to the other end of the board and we're going to start hooking up some of our accessories which the uh, run program switch should be, uh, be one of those. I'm going to show you how to do that next. One thing I really like about the Electric Railroad Company products is the uh, instructions are, are so easy to follow. I've, I've put stuff together before, I've, you know, you had to read it over and over again. And the more you read, the more confusing it became, but it's not that way with Electric Railroad Company. When you look at how to install the run program switch, you've got it aligned properly here, okay? The center contact goes over to number two. So we're going to take this contact, I've already got it trimmed and stripped, Okay, and we're going to go over to number two. Let me show you how to do that now. Okay, now we're back to this board here. And what we're going to do, the instructions tell you to take the center wire and go to contact number two. And then we take the other remaining wire and that goes right next to it to contact number three. Now keep in mind contact number three is a common ground so you can put other stuff in there as well. And there's actually two grounds on um, this board and that is number three and number six. So there's two different places to draw from. Okay now the next thing we're going to do, which is just going to take a second, we're about ready to test this out. Okay we're going to take our antenna your antenna basically is 11 inch piece of wire and it's got a single connector on the end of it and that plugs right into the single contact coming up right next to your contact block so that goes right there so that's your antenna now if you would prefer I've never done it but if you prefer that contact is also parallel to number one so you can also take an antenna piece and put it in there if you prefer instead of this but don't do both. Then the next thing we're going to do we're going to take our R4L board which is our radio board and we're going to put it on top of the, of the uh, command board. Make sure that when you plug that in take your finger and, th uh, and thumb and support that board because it moves and you don't want to break the board. Also make darn sure that when you plug that in, that's a 24 pin 
plug so it's easy to get it off center by one don't do that because you'll blow the board if you do okay once it gets like this now we're ready to test it and see if it works. okay now we've got our engine on the track we've got the power to the track on we've got our legacy in operation notice that you need to take your antenna since this is just temporarily and make sure that it's away from the rest of the board and so forth and laying right like this is, uh, is, is usually how it's going to fall and that's, that's no problem got the wires back here that we're going to hook up in a few minutes to the coupler and like all Lionel boards and the um, Electric Railroad Company is, is made by Lionel they come pre-programmed to address one so I'm going to hit engine one and let's see what happens All right. All right, she works. Okay, in part two of this video now, we're going to install the soundboard. We have already successfully installed uh, the command board into uh, uh, the tender, which you'll see right here. We've already put it on the track, we've tested it out, it works properly, so now we're ready to go ahead and install the, uh, uh, the soundboard. Electric Railroad Company makes a lot of different uh, steam boards. Uh, if they don't have one that's specific for, a, for an engine such as, uh, as an example, a consolidator or something like that, then they have what's called small steam, medium steam, and large steam. For this particular engine, we're going to use large steam. Uh, it has a really nice... Uh, uh, sound to it. Uh, when we get done, we'll we'll uh, test it out, and you'll be able to see. Uh, just for uh, the sake of being a little bit quicker, I've gone ahead and I've installed the two components uh, into the tender uh, frame here. And what we've got, and it's been mounted with double-sided tape, which they display, or I mean, sorry, which they uh, provide to you, is. The speaker comes in a plastic baffle, and in this particular case, there was not room to stand it up, so we mounted it on its back. I think you can see the layer of tape right here. There's the speaker itself. This is the wire, and the wire simply plugs into the board. Now, one thing I like about these boards is that every single plug on them is different, so that prevents you from plugging it into the wrong slot. This particular uh, speaker plug is a three pin plug and this is the correct plug right here it's the only one that's got three pins in it and we simply plug it in also notice before we go any further that the board also has been installed with double sided with double sided tape here uh, the only thing you got to watch out is, of course, you've got all the solder joints on the board uh, on the bottom. So you got to make sure that when you put it on and you put the double-sided tape on, all the uh, contacts on the bottom of the board is insulated. So just be real careful. That's about the only thing that would cause you a problem. So the two basic components are going to be the soundboard and the speaker. Uh, within a matter of five minutes, they were installed. We got the speaker plugged in. And then next I'd like to show you the other components that's going to come in the kit. You're going to have some more wires. Now this particular wire is optional. You'll notice it's got a terminal for a 9 volt battery on one end and it's got a mini two prong plug on the other end. This is for if you want to install a battery in case you ever want to run your engine in the uh, conventional mode it's a carryover uh, circuit so when you press the button to change direction the sound doesn't drop out if you're running this in uh, TMCC or Legacy there's no reason to install this you can just put it in a box somewhere and on down the road if you ever need it then you'll have it the next thing is there's three plugs on this particular wire harness let me let me back this out a little bit so we can see it a little bit better you got two wires, one's purple, one's black. This is this is for your serial data that has to do with your sound. And you've got a uh, I believe it's a eight or nine pin plug on this end, although you've only got two wires going into it. I think you can see that. And then you've got a four wire plug 
that's got a second set of wires, which are black and red, that plugs into the board. This is where you get the power from the board. And then the other end has a two-pin plug on it, and that goes into your soundboard. So uh, that is really the only thing that you've got to uh, um, uh, worry about as far as plugging into your board, with the only other exception being your chuff switch. The chuff switch goes on the bottom. It's, it's kind of fragile, so be careful how you handle it. What you've got is a reed switch up here. It's pretty much fully encased in shrink wrap. Then you've got bare wires on the bottom that you're going to have to solder onto the... Uh, or you can, use, you can use wire nuts too onto another plug that goes into the board that I'm going to show you about in a minute. Well, actually, I'll just show it to you now. This is the other plug. It's got a blue and a black wire on it, and this goes into the board. And this end here, you trim them off so you don't have excess, or you can trim off the wires on the uh, on the chuff switch. It really doesn't matter. And uh, you know, put them together with wire ties, uh, or I mean, uh, solder them, or with uh, wire nuts, and you'll be good to go. So we're going to do that in a few minutes. Let me go ahead and uh, plug up everything. Let me see if I can come in a little bit. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to plug in the three position wire that I showed you. That's going to draw the information from the serial port uh, and also the power from the, uh, from the board itself. Now, the best thing to do when you plug this into your command board, take the top board off, get your four position pin plug, four pin plug, plug it in, pull it down to the side and then you're ready to put your board back on and again check to make sure that you haven't slid over on these 24 pins otherwise you'll be blowing your board okay then the next thing you do you take your two position wire and plug it in right next to the plug for your speaker wire. Then you take your multi-position plug that's got the purple and the black on it and it goes over on the opposite corner like so. Okay, once you've accomplished this then you're ready to go ahead and install your chuff switch. Okay now the components that we're going to work with on, in, on in, uh, installing your chuff switch, first of all, let's see if I can get this focused here, you've got a very small magnet. Okay, as I was saying, you've got a very small magnet. I was trying to show it to you on the end of the screwdriver, but it wasn't going to focus. So I've got it in the palm of my hand there. It's extremely small, and it is also extremely powerful. That is going to go on one of the inside wheels uh, just a little bit out from the axle. I want to go ahead and put that on and show you the proper positioning for that. Okay, I've got the uh, magnet glued to the wheels. Now, there's really no uh, right or wrong as far as what wheel that you put it on, but what you want to do is plan ahead, figure out how you're going to have to mount your chuff switch itself, and then make sure it's on a wheel that'll reach it okay. If you can see right here, that's the magnet. Now, the magnet itself will stick to these wheels and it will stick hard, but don't uh, be tempted to just allow the magnetism to hold it to the wheel. Once you start to run it around, the first time it comes into contact with something metal, it will probably be pulled off. I use a, uh, uh, just a regular normal gap filling super glue and put one little tiny drop, put the magnet on, give it about two or three minutes, and once you get it on, uh, it's not going to come off. Also, when you look at the distance from the axle, um, I put it somewhere around an eighth or two of an inch. You don't want to get it too far on the outside of the wheel because if you get it too far from the edge, what's going to happen uh, when you go over a set of switches, it's going to get hung up on the guardrails. And after a period of time, it'll probably come off. So make sure that you get it somewhere around an eighth uh, or maybe three sixteenths of an inch from the axle and it'll be in good shape. 
Now, when it comes to mounting the uh, the, the uh, switch for the chuff uh, feature on the uh, board, uh, they really don't tell you exactly how to do it, and it really depends on uh, you know what's the easiest. And what I found works easiest for me is they're going to give you some heat shrink tubing, and if you'll take the end of the wire and put it into the heat shrink tubing. What you want to do is pull it through and you're going to see at the end of the switch where the heat shrink is, you're going to see it's flat. It's about probably not quite a quarter of an inch of being flat. Now, I don't know if you can see this or not, but the actual end of the heat shrink tubing is right here. Let me pull this out so it's a little more fun. It's right about here. You don't want that inside the heat shrink. You want to leave it exposed. Then what you're going to do, you're going to physically put it and hold it on the car itself and position it and take a visual of where to cut it off. And normally you're going to have maybe a half an inch or less that you're going to glue. In this case it's going to be easy to not have a nice flat spot here that you can, that you can glue it on. Now what you want to do, you want to uh, mount the end of the switch so the flat edge is parallel to the wheel and you want it approximately one quarter of an inch away from the magnet. Now what you want to find in just about all wheel sets is you're going to have some play back and forth. So on this particular one there's not a lot of play but you can see you've got some play back and forth. You just want to make sure you don't get it so close that if it's positioned when it's forward and then it comes towards you that it hits the switch. You don't want it to be more than a quarter of an inch away but you don't want to touch it either. So that's a visual and that switch is, is, is not that sensitive so if you get it close it's going to work. Now the next thing that you do is you take your wires and you pull the switch out of your heat shrink. Then you cut your heat shrink and glue it. I'm going to go ahead and do that then we'll continue. Okay I've got the shrink uh, tubing glued to the bottom frame of the uh, truck right near where the magnet is. I know it's hard to see. It's right here. I'll shine a light on it. It's going to make everything look gold but it's really not. It's just the reflection of the light. You can see it a little better. You can see that tube sitting right, right there. Right in the middle of the light beam. Okay, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to take, now I realize this isn't the easiest thing to see, but we're going to take uh, the reed switch, we're going to string it through, and we're going to position it. Now when we position it, you want to do two things. You pull your magnet down, so it's right over the reed switch, and you push it forward and then you turn it so the flat okay we've got everything about hooked up now uh, what did this tape left off a few minutes ago we were getting ready to put in the uh, chuff switch the chuff switch is now in uh, again Looking at it with all this, with all the black colors here is kind of difficult. But if you look right here, you'll see the chuff switch has been strung through the uh, uh, the tubing. The wire has come up and went through one of the holes. Make sure that you leave enough slack in the wire so when you turn the wheel around, that you're not going to pull it. Usually, if you make a loop out of it, which I've done here. Uh, you'll have no binding. Okay, then it came up through the bottom. I cut off the excess wires we talked about earlier and soldered it on to the plug that had the blue and the black wire on it. And then it goes right here on the board. And again, every single plug on this board 
uh, is a different size or different number of pins so you cannot put them in the wrong one. Okay, now we're ready to put it on the track and we'll check out all the features. Uh, once we do that then we'll just clean up the work with tying some of these wires together to make it ne neater and we'll be done. So let me go ahead, I'm going to turn the video off for a minute, I'm going to put it on the track and we'll see what happens. Okay, we're all ready. Got the engine on the track, got everything hooked up. First thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, select the engine and the remote. Ah, and it works. Let's try all features. Try the bell. Okay, let's try the crew talk and the tower com. How's that track mode? Are we clear? Over. Negative. Hold your position. Over. Roger that. Out. Dispatcher here. You're cleared onto the main. Over. Roger that. All clear. Out. Okay, I've already tested the volume. The, vo the volume works. Now let's see how she chuffs. There you go. The only thing we have to do now is take and uh, put some wire ties on the wires and put the tender back in and uh, we'll run it one more time after we do that just so you can see what it looks like once everything's all buttoned up. Well there you have the installation. We're all done now except for putting the shell on. Uh, but I've secured the wires with some wire ties and made sure that uh, there's no wires that were too tight at the same time, got rid of all the excess length and everything. Uh, makes for a neat installation and there's plenty of room for when you put your body shell on. We're going to put the body shell on, try it one more time and we'll be finished. Well we have it all finished up. We've got to put it back together and one thing you find when you put the body shell on the uh, tenders typically you're going to have a throatier sound to it, which in this case you definitely do. So now all we have left to do is just put it on the track, run it around, and really enjoy it.